All right, it is Friday, and it is time to kick back and think about a little bit fun, a little bit of fun this weekend, and this might be right up your alley. Bowling. Yeah, believe it or not, tomorrow is National Bowling Day. Who knew? And joining us is Coley Edison of Bullmore Lanes. And all the bowling alleys across the country are celebrating National Bowling Day. Yeah. So how are you gonna how are you gonna do this? We're gonna participate by honoring the free bowling coupon. Everybody can bowl for free one game until 7 p.m. Okay. and we're excited about it. So where do you go to get the free coupon for You go to gobowling.com for the free coupon. Okay, gobowling.com. Yeah. I get my free coupon, I bowl free tomorrow. Exactly, till seven, one game. Only one game. Yes. Okay. Do I have to buy anything else with this, or am I all set? Well, we hope you will, but you're all yeah, set. Yeah, I figured you would be. Okay, <laughs> let's talk about the bowling industry, because one thing that's doing about Bullmore, you're opening up, and this is kind of New York eccentric, you're opening up a huge new bowling alley at four, on 44th Street in Times Square. Mm -hmm. So you're Bullmore. expanding. Yeah, right Bullmore now. Lanes is about to open our second New York property. It's 90,000 square feet. 50 lanes, a David Burke restaurant, um, a nightclub, an event space. It's really bowling. It's the Taj Mahal of bowling, we like to think. Do you think that people actually go to bowling? I mean, bowling is a cheaper sport. It's definitely cheaper than going to a baseball game or a football game or something. Are you finding yeah. more interest in the sport I because mean, of the recession? Yeah, I mean, first, our main business is parties and events, and that's like a bit of a downturn in 2008, 2009. But that's even back up in 2010, even in double digits over last year. Well, James, the guys at the at your office just called me and said, uh, when is James taking us out for a bowling? Party. Well, actually, it's a great question because I've, I, I enjoy Baltimore very much, uh, and I've recently, in the last couple of months, been there for my niece's uh, eight, eight year old birthday party, and I also went to a corporate event where the age was, let's say, a little older. What is your what, what is the age range, or what is your target, uh, I guess, customer? It's uh, interesting. We have so many target customers. I mean, you can come in instead of going on a date. I mean, movies are over, take them to bowling. You can come in for an eight-year-old's birthday party. You can have a bar mitzvah. We've had a wedding. I mean, and a wedding and a, a bowling? wedding on the lanes. And then <laughs> corporate events are really our, our target business. Where, where are you all located? I mean, I brought up the New York issue with the expansion here in Times Square. But you're, yeah, you're, so, you're, you're just not in New York. No, we're not. Um, okay. We have other properties in Bethesda, Maryland, okay. Miami, Southern California, Northern California, and right here in Long Island. Oh, here we go. We're looking at a map of where all of your, uh, your, your places are right yeah. now. Um, so do you think that bowling is kind of becoming more of a... You know, more of a popular sport, and do you, are you, you know, like a David Burke restaurant? I yeah. Mean, or a Times Building. I mean, that's yeah. I mean, we're elevating end. bowling. We're making it a high-end experience. There used to be, you know, you go bowling and it's cold food and hot beer, and now we're we're updating it. It's an upscale experience, so it's an inexpensive alternative to, like you said, going to a game, but it's still in a nice environment, so you can take a date. I don't want to. I don't want to date myself here, but actually, I know how to keep score in bowling. Oh my God! And like yet, written and, down. And, and yet, and yet, when I've I've gone bowling, I watch how many people do not, in part because of the computerized and the and the way you now uh, automatically keep score. Um, I guess my question is: is has that actually helped? Because I wonder now, because it's not complicated. If that has expanded your client base, and at the same point, have we created an entire generation of people now who have no idea how to keep score? But from the business <laughs> side, has that been a big help in terms of expanding? Yeah, uh, I mean, we've had automated bowling scoring since 1997 and a lot of the other lanes have also but what it is that you touch on it's, it's easy it's something that if you don't know how to bowl you can still go and throw gutters all night like me and have a great time so I think it's that easy factor that makes it usable to everybody mm -hmm. you're throwing gutters you work for Bullmore you can't be telling me you're throwing I, I, know. I bet you're better bowling than that I have to practice but I mean every, anytime I break a hundred I'm happy <laughs> <laughs> real quick we've been doing a series of, uh, with jobs all week on the show I do want to ask you are you hiring right now oh we're definitely hiring our new Times Square location will employ over three hundred new um, new people. So we're Great. excited about that. We'll see you at the opening, hopefully. <laughs> yes, right, you're definitely road invited. Trip <laughs> from the noon show. Coley Edison, thank you for coming in. Thank you for having me. Once again, folks, National Bowling Day tomorrow. Go to GoBowling.com. It's, it's something free. Free in a recession. Take it, right? All right, come it's guest time. Just a reminder, you can read everybody's best guests on my latest commentary at my blog, and that's CassoniExchange.com. Follow me on Twitter at Cheryl Cassoni. And Steve, what you got for best guest today? Well, look for the Obama administration to really try to ramp up its efforts to create jobs. They had a, their chairwoman of the Council of Economic Advisors, Christina Romer, is leaving the post that was announced uh, late last night. So uh, there's a little bit of turmoil there. They've got to pull out some good jobs. Otherwise, it's going to be a very tough midterm election. Yeah, Peter so Orzag, now Romer. So, yeah, Who's next? they're in flux. They're in flux. Hmm. So we'll see. Resignation time at the White House. What you got, James? Uh, we touched on it in a, a few ways, but the S&P, uh, the company's reporting 75% are still beating uh, estimates, so the earnings are great. The estimates and are too low. 
Maybe that was too low. <laughs> Thank you. But, but, the, uh, but the economic data, including obviously the number uh, today, was what everyone was looking for, and it continues uh, to somewhat disappoint. So I feel uh, stocks are kind of running in quicksand, and the data represents a weight that is going to be very heavy. So I just don't see us moving all that far. In fact, I think the risk is to the downside. So uh, uh, it, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing again and again. And if we're going to keep the rates low and continue to try to pump money in the system, the question is, will we get a different result now than what we've had so far? So. Well, you know, uh, okay, look at the stock I had earlier. Look, uh, Crocs, right? It's a it's a cheaper shoe. They last a long time. That company had a lot of problems. The stock was in the toilet for a yeah. long time. I don't own Crocs. I'm not saying that I like it, but anything. But I think it's a great example of where the consumer-driven economy is going to go for the next six months. And this is not my best guess, but I think that we're in for some really rough months ahead. Six months. I'm a complete downer on a Friday, and I'm sorry. Uh, but I think that's indicative of the earnings that you're going to see. The picture for the bigger multinationals is going to be more to the negative for the third quarter, fourth quarter. It sounds like we're on the same side, so no wager today. And consumer discretion. Yeah, you lost now. that bet last time. Right. You, don't you owe me dinner or something? I forgot what it was. If LeBron James and the Miami Heat make the playoffs and win these championships, we're a little ways away from okay. the... Uh, okay. You have okay. time. I got some time. You time to okay. up the ante on that one. Mine's on... Uh, it's actually, again, back to the consumer. It's the weekend box office is coming up and this other guy's movie is coming out with Will Ferrell and all that. If you look, I think it's going to be a disappointing uh, box office season overall for the entire summer. I say that because because I know you've got IMAX and 3D and all that stuff, but uh, movies have gotten so expensive. People would rather go bowling. Yeah, they want to go bowling. But people, you they, can't how afford they, to take your family to a movie. They put all their best movies up in the beginning of the summer, like Iron Man, and then, you know now we're towards the end of the summer. It's kind of like uh, fizzled out mm -hmm. a little bit. I did see Inception. In IMAX. I paid for that. But you know what? That's the only movie I think I will pay for the entire summer in an IMAX theater. It's expensive. You want to take sure. your kids to a uh, movie? You can't. People can't afford it. I'm still, I saw Inception. I'm still confused. I don't, how many layers down do we go? Three, four? I'm, I'm still This entire to show, out. James, is a whole dream. <laughs> You're really not here at Fox like the Matrix on then Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, thank you very much for spending uh, the hour with me. And I also want to thank our viewers. We've had